Welcome to Family Tree Magazine's Best Websites Podcast. This is the podcast devoted to finding the best websites to help you with your genealogy research. I'm Lisa Louise Cook. History Pen is a free online tool for gathering, tagging, and sharing images, online videos, and other stories about historical topics. And it uniquely links them to a place. Well, in her new website tutorial article in the July-August issue of Family Tree Magazine, Sunny J. Morton refers to History Pin as sort of like Pinterest for history lovers, where each pin is tagged with locations, dates, keywords, and descriptions. And thank goodness she's here joining me today on the podcast to tell you more about it and how you can get started. Hi, Sunny. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here. You know, like many websites that fall in this category of best websites for genealogy, History Pin isn't technically a genealogy website, is it? No, it's not really. But when it comes down to it, most of the websites I find most useful for my genealogy research are really not technically genealogy. They're about history because history tells us the story behind our ancestors' lives. And I really feel like that's what History Pin helps us do. As you mentioned, I described it as kind of like Pinterest for history lovers. But if you think of it as pinning all those old pictures that you find on a map. So for me, photos are all about location, location, location. And if I can find old pictures pertaining to the places where my ancestors were, you know, even if they're not in them, even if it's just a picture of the neighborhood, a picture of the school they attended or the street they worked on or something like that, that really gives me a visual into the locations of their lives. I'm all about that. I love it. I totally agree. And and I think that's why sometimes these websites outside of the genealogy sphere are so helpful because we're getting contributions, not just from genealogists, but just people generally who have photographs, right? Yes, absolutely. That's one of the fun things about exploring the collections there is that people with lots of different interests or who have just come across their old family pictures or community pictures, local history, they've just are they're contributing them here. And this is a great place to find them when you might not, you know, if it was just a local historical society or certainly somebody's pictures that they posted on their family tree, you would never necessarily connect them to your ancestor's neighborhood or street because they're not tagged and labeled that way as they are on History Pin. Yes, and I can see why this website caught your attention because I know you've been such a prominent person in the genealogy world talking about social history. And as you mentioned, many of these photographs add to the, the social history and the context and helps us visualize even if they're not in the photos. So tell us before we kind of get into the tutorial side of things, which you covered so well in your article, just generally, what does History Pin do? What can people get out of it? So you need to come to History Pin knowing the places you want to explore. And I think we all have our favorite relatives' neighborhoods that we've explored. We've pulled it from the 1950 census or the 1900 census or wherever we found it, a city directory. We've got a location that we're interested in. And if you can get down to the neighborhood level, even the street level, and sometimes more broadly, the city level, if you know about the locations that you're interested in, like those places that I mentioned, Lisa, you know, where they went to church or where they went to school or the factory or the mine they worked at or things like that. So if you can get those locations and then drill into history pin with a location search, you can see has someone happened to upload pictures that were taken of those places that reference those particular buildings or communities that can really illustrate the stories of our people's lives. So anybody can contribute a photograph and pin it to a location, and then anybody can come to the website, even if they're not contributing pictures, and search for locations. So it's kind of a collaborative effort here. So let's talk about what the first thing we need to do to get started. Do we need an account to get involved in it? 
Yeah, for sure. You're going to want to sign up for the free user ID and login. Um, and then once you do, it comes pretty quickly where you can confirm your account. And then you're just going to want to start exploring. Now, now, I will say this, just to search, start to look around on History Pin, you don't have to have a user ID, but you're going to want to have one because my experience was as soon as I searched for a very specific place I was interested in and I didn't see any search results, but then I started seeing them in other places. I'm like, oh, well, I have pictures that I wanted. Like, I found that I'm like, I could populate with the things that they don't have. So you might feel that way. So you're going to want to sign up for that free user ID, that login, so that you can start contributing too. But once you've uh, got that, you can start exploring History Pin. I think I like the uh, search by location feature best. So this is still a fairly new kind of experience and it's not fully populated with all the things yet because all the people like us, Lisa, have not come along and said, oh, I need to put this one up here. So (laughs) there's still there's still a lot of blank spots on the map, but there's also a lot of really cool things. And when you start looking by location, like I started looking in my hometown of Euclid, Ohio. And so I, I went under and I searched by location under explore history pin. And then there's an interactive map where you can enter a location. I did that and I didn't see anything exclusively for Euclid, but as I uh, zoomed out just a little bit, I came across uh, Euclid Beach Park, which was an old amusement park associated with my city, just outside the city limits. And there were some great pictures there that I looked at, and those were great. So Lisa, did you happen to take a look at it yourself? I did. And I think when I got there, I went, I clicked on explore and I saw the search box. Listeners have probably heard me talk before about my family that was in San Francisco. Uh, at the turn of the century when the great earthquake happened in 1906. So I knew from the city directories and some other research that they were on Connecticut Street. So the first thing I did, Sonny, was actually go to the general location, get over to San Francisco on the map. So I just typed in San Francisco, even though I knew the specifics. And it seemed to help because once I was in that general area of the map, then I started to type in Connecticut Street. And History Pin was kind of prioritizing a Connecticut street, but within San Francisco, because there might be one somewhere else across the country. I don't know. Sure. There's probably lots of Connecticut streets. Yeah. So it's a particular area of um, San Francisco and a bunch of photos came up. In fact, you mentioned one about, you know, schools and places where um, when my grandfather attended grade school, there was a picture and it had uh, Connecticut street and the cross street and a photograph of the playground, probably, you know, with kids on it, probably more from the 1940s, about the time my mom was Okay, born. but that's still cool. It hasn't changed a whole lot. And it really, <laughs> yeah, it really let me know that, hey, there's more here. And I can see there are, there appear to be absolutely thousands of photographs in this area. So that might not, I imagine, be the case in all locations, but particularly. It's not. I think I think that San Francisco is one of their locations that they've really um, curated some information for. So I so once you start seeing some of those pictures that look really interesting to you, Lisa, you're going to want to click on those individual pins. You can do that right there on the map or a gallery that populates a view that populates to the right so that you can drill in and learn more about individual pictures. So for example, I was looking at those pictures of Euclid Beach Park um, just outside of Euclid and I found descriptions of the old pictures and then they're also tagged to be parts of various collections because users of History Pin can curate collections, just like you would a Pinterest board. Uh, you know, I, I all of my inspirational quilting designs, I have a <laughs> Pinterest board for all of those. And you can do a similar sort of thing with History Pin, where you can tag everything that's maybe related to that little amusement park. And that's what someone had done. There were various collections, and they were back to about like 1912. And there were, they were part of a collection for Euclid Beach Park, a 
part of a collection for amusement parks. So you can tag them and search them in different ways. And then they also have things like the copyright information in case you love this picture and you'd like to use it in your own little slideshow or family history publication or your blog or something like that. And you want to make sure you're using it responsibly. And then any other kinds of notes that the the pinner may have added as well. So you can really dig in and learn quite a bit about these images, depending on what all people have had to say about them. Yes. I also noticed that those collections popped up and my great grandfather had talked about going to the 1915 Panama Pacific International Exp- Exposition that was in San Francisco. Oh, okay. There's a whole collection of photographs. So it was like, even though he didn't leave a lot of photos, he left more of a story about it. I can read his story and look along these. And I noticed there is a share button. So I guess we can click share and get the embed code if we want to put this on our own family history blog. Right, for sure. Well, you've got a nice rabbit hole to go down with those pictures, don't yes. you? If you <laughs> if you decide that that's something that you want to do. Because you can search for these specific collections of pins or topics that you know other people may have created, including your own. So um, under the collections tab, you can search for a keyword, you can search for a place, and then just click the results to view the pins and um, the map that view that goes along with them. So I did this for Oliphant, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, which you've probably heard me talk about before. My husband's ancestors yeah. lived there. Um, he was a firefighter for the local Slovakian fire uh, department. And I've got lots of great old pictures here. So, um, and when I looked for Oliphant, Pennsylvania, I didn't see a whole lot there. And that's one of the places that I said, okay, I can contribute here. I can see where I have something to add because I have unique photos that I don't think anyone else has digitized. So I created a collection for Oliphant, Pennsylvania. And most of the pins that I added are related to his work um, as a firefighter. I've got this footage of him on his fire truck. I've got a picture of the family's church across the street and like his brother who who's, uh, was also a firefighter and his funeral at the church across the street. They were taking the they were taking his coffin off the back of the fire truck. Like he was, his coffin was delivered to the church on the back of the fire engine. So photos of the fire company, there's a a plaque that lists his name and lots of other names of people who uh, were part of that fire company. So just from these few items, if anybody else that was looking for the story of this neighborhood happened across these, they would certainly have some pictures maybe with their relatives in them, but certainly that helped tell a story about this Slovakian immigrant neighborhood. Absolutely. And I was going to ask you about if you have any favorite features or favorite search strategies. I I know for me, one of mine is that each image has a place for me to leave a comment or a story, because even though I didn't have the photo, I have some of the story that the great grandfather told. And so I can add that to this picture. Did you have some favorite features? Yes. Yes. uh, And I I love yours because yours really highlights the collaborative nature of history pins. So somebody else can share the picture, but then you can share what you might have to add about it. So my favorite thing is really um, the ability to put my picture right there in Google Street View. So, and the the article shows how I did this for one of them. So um, if you see a pin that has like a small yellow person in the corner, that means the pin has been put right on Google Street View. And what I mean by that is when you click it, you can actually go into a view that looks like you're standing there in the middle of the street looking at the sidewalk or wherever this was taken and you can see where the image is exactly. Somebody has pinned it exactly to that location and so maybe it's a building, an old picture of a building and it's on top of the where the building used to be now or where it still is and there's even a slider view that you can make the picture fade so that you can see what's behind it really now on Google Street View and then you can go more opaque to make it look like that's what 
what's there now. So it's it's kind of hard to describe on an audio, but the magazine shows how it's done. And certainly you could go to historypin.com and see how that's done. I did that for um, my husband's great grandfather's fire company. I realized that the picture that I had of them was right in front of the old borough building, which still stands. It has very distinctive architectural features, like the stone around the windows and the doors. I, I looked very closely in Google Street View and I could see this, this was, I can tell exactly where this was taken. And I, so I pinned that picture and I spent some time getting the scale right and everything else so that when anybody goes to look at it, it's going to look like those sepia-toned men are standing there right on the steps where they stood over a hundred years ago. It's very cool. It is very cool. And and everybody listening got to check out the July, August issue of Family Tree Magazine for 2023 because there's a photograph of this photo she's talking about pinned on history pin. And it really is neat. It is just like time travel. Wow. Okay. Well, we've been talking about historypin.org. And again, it's a free website, lots to discover. I guess my little tip would be, I just noticed when I was in this 1915 Panama exhibition, when I held the control button and used the scroller ball on my mouse, I not only was able to zoom in very quickly, but I'm seeing that there are layers and layers, even an old map is there. So Sunny, I yes. have a rabbit hole to go down. You <laughs> sure you have so much. You absolutely have a rabbit hole to go down. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of what we've been doing on Google Earth, Google Maps for years now with this historical map overlay. And you know, you're the one I've really heard talking about this before. So I'm guessing this ex- kind of experience looks kind of familiar to you. Very similar. And and what Sunny's talking about is creating these, you know, map or picture photograph overlays, very much like what History Pin's doing for you, but you can kind of do it in your own project in Google Earth. So if you want to learn more about that, I teach a Google Earth for genealogy course at Family Tree University. So I, I think I'll put a link in the show notes for that as well. Because this may just whet your appetite. It might. <laughs> it abs- <laughs> absolutely will. I think so. Well, Sunny, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing historypen.org as a best website. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Family Tree Magazine's Best Websites podcast. We'll have the website address for History Pin as well as the link over to Sunny's article over at the show notes. You can find those at familytreemagazine.com slash podcast. Also, while you're at the website, I would encourage you to sign up for our free email newsletter. It's the perfect way to stay in touch with everything we've got going on at Family Tree Magazine, including our other podcast, the Family Tree Magazine podcast. I'm Lisa Louise Cook, and you can find me at my website, genealogygems.com, where you'll find links to my podcast, the Genealogy Gems podcast, and YouTube channel. Until next time, have fun climbing your family tree.